welcome back to Royalty Soaps. I asked you guys on Instagram if you would like to do a Q&A for either soap and business questions or personal and creative questions, and you guys voted for personal and creative questions, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. Quick announcement before we begin. We have moved the Homestead Collection launch date because of Snowmageddon 2021. For those who don't know, I do live in Texas and I was without power at my house for three days. We had a pipe break out in my guest house and my parents only had power every 15 minutes or so. So obviously we were not able to work that week and therefore we have to move everything a week forward. So instead of the first Saturday of March, the Homestead Collection will be on the second Saturday of March, and all the videos that are coming out after this one will be updated to reflect that, but obviously all the ones I had previously posted are now inaccurate. Now you guys did not hold back on the personal questions. Y'all dove right in, so I'm going to answer some of the ones that I got asked the most first, and then we'll get into the uh, more specific and some slightly niche questions later on. And if you want to just see me answer like one or two questions, I will leave a link to all of them down below with a timestamp so you can just pop on over right to it. So many people asked me if I want more kids and how many kids do I want? So when Caleb and I first got married, both of us were like four kids, two boys and two girls would be awesome, but obviously if we ended up with four boys and four girls, we'd either be little men or we'd be really close to Pride and Prejudice and that's cool too. But that was the original thought and then after we had Lily and Will, I think we've just kind of mellowed out in our ripe old age of 26. <laughs> And I just feel a lot more relaxed about it. I come from a very large family, so I'm the oldest of 10 kids, both from the same parents. So there's no half siblings. It's all, they're all my like full siblings. And then Caleb has two half sisters and two half brothers, and he's the youngest. But he was basically raised as an only child. And I don't know. I think we're just gonna relax and see how we feel as time goes on and just, you know, play it by ear. I know that's not a very exciting uh, response, but it's the honest truth. <laughs> so Jasmine Jobson asks, what's your favorite part of the land slash farm you live on? And I was surprised a lot of people actually asked this question. There's a lot of things I really, really like. And I'm a very uh, outdoor person. I like to be outdoors as much as possible. And luckily Texas weather really accommodates that for us. So there is this little nook in the very like furthest corner of the property that has pine trees and it smells so good and it's very shaded and there is this like lush green grass that grows in like a very flat area. It's perfect for picnicking. The kids and I go down there sometimes to read and I just, if I had to pick a favorite, that would probably be it. Kazrin94 asks, are you planning to homeschool? A lot of people ask me this question. I was surprised. So I know right now there are a lot of people homeschooling out of necessity, and I'm really, really excited to see how many people choose to continue to homeschool, even when there are other options more widely available, because I've seen a lot of people saying they're actually enjoying it. I also know that people are doing something called distance learning, and I'm no expert on what exactly that is because I don't know anybody doing it, but distance learning being like you still have your regular public school teachers, but you're at home and they're teaching you via like Zoom calls. So that's really cool. But to answer the question, yes, I do plan on homeschooling. I was homeschooled for the greater majority of my education, namely junior high and high school. Also, I went to a co-op. So not all of my classes were taught by my mom. Uh, I ended up learning sciences and histories from other people. And then my mom did language arts and she did math because her minor is math by the way. My mom got her degree in education and then minored in maths and arithmetic so she obviously taught me that and I was horrible at it and I still am. But yeah, I just think that homeschooling provides a lot of really unique uh, opportunities and I certainly would not have been able to start Royalty Soaps had I not been homeschooled and for part of my senior year having like a senior project that I worked on, uh, both of my brothers 
classes and my sister have also done that. We also were required by my mom to teach other people at the co-op. So there were like classes we ended up teaching. I actually taught quite a few classes. I did a class called Bookworms where I picked out um, a really, really cool like children's book and then we did a craft inspired by it. So that was like a younger like kindergarten class. And then I also taught a soap making class. I ended up teaching the same soap making class that I took when I first learned how a few years later when I was 19 or 20. So my mom required that from all of us older kids when we were in the co-op to teach a class as well. That was an extraordinary learning opportunity. I can't thank her enough for making me write a syllabus that was 12 weeks long. It was a lot of work, but I ended up really loving it and I really loved teaching. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I was able to put together the Royal Creative Academy in a really like seamless and condensed way was because I had prior teaching experience. So that is a ton of information you probably didn't want to know. Uh, the short answer is yes, Caleb and I do plan on homeschooling our children. I am honestly surprised at how many people ask me that. Anne's388 asks, advice for new mothers. This was another thing that lots of people asked me. I don't feel like I've been a mother for long enough to really give other people advice. Both of my children are still really young. Lily is three and Will, he will actually be turning two in April. So I'm just not very experienced. But one thing I will say is that having a regular bedtime is very helpful for both uh, children and you. <laughs> Kids really seem to like routines. I know that that's something that my mom liked to do. She had morning chores and nighttime chores and then a pretty strict schedule, especially at night when we were younger. And we thrived off of that sort of discipline and that sort of structure. And both of my children seem to really do well with that too. They know exactly what to expect. Um, and because all the guidelines are very clear and easy to understand, they do a good job. And I really like to, parent with positive rewards instead of punishments. That was something else that my mom did. She was very, very focused on creating systems in which you received rewards for doing the right thing um, with minimal punishment for doing the wrong thing. So you just didn't get the good stuff. I specifically remember one time um, my mom put together kind of a system for our clothes because there was like so much clothes when there were seven of us under the age of six. 16 in her house and she was like for those of y'all who stay under this many items of clothes every week we will go to Sonic and get a slush on Friday and so it was a very 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 good thing that we were highly motivated by but there were a couple of weeks where people weren't watching what they were doing they weren't thinking about their laundry and whether or not it was actually clean they were just throwing it into the hamper which is why we had so much laundry in the first place and those people didn't get a slush so we would drive to Sonic and everyone would get something except that one person and they didn't feel very good about it and so guess what they never did it again <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily a punishment it was just a lack of reward and that was something that she did a lot and it was very very effective so putting together very easy to understand simple systems for small children is something that I have found very useful and incentivizing by reward Kate the vibrant Virgo asks if you had to choose a youtuber or designer to decorate your house who would you choose? <gasps> well, since you asked, it's not like I haven't been ceaselessly watching interior decorating videos for the past two months or anything, but it would be a really, really tough decision between Alexandra from Alexandra Gator or Drew from Lone Fox. Both of those are like, superior. This next question, it cracks me up because the username is Julia the Grouch. And she asks, how do you manage to still be so positive? <laughs> Any tips? Yes, I have some tips. This may surprise you. It, it just might, but I am actually, I have an inclination to be moodier. Um, when I was a teenager, probably even more so, but for those of y'all who give a crap about the Enneagram, it can never decide whenever I take a test um, whether I am a four or a two. And a four is like the romantic idealist and they kind of have like really high highs and low lows. Um, so I, fully believe for myself personally, and I'm not going to go put this 
out for all of y'all. Positivity for me is a choice. It's something that I wake up and I choose every morning and I do it by mitigating what I'm thinking about. So if I am going through the day and I'm like, crap, this dishwasher isn't running. It makes me so mad with stuff. I will catch myself thinking those things in my head and stop them. I'll just stop and be like, no, I'm not gonna think about that. Instead, I'm gonna play the glad game like Pollyanna and I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm really grateful that I have a dishwasher and even though it didn't run the cycle super well or whatever, I'm, I'm really lucky to have one. And so I'm gonna focus on that instead. This is something that takes practice and it does take time and it does take consistent effort to do. Once you learn how to think like that, it's not like, oh, well, now that I know how to do it, I'll do it forever and I'll always be positive. No, this is something that needs maintenance and you have to continue to work on if you value it. And I do. And I feel like a lot of people that I am around are very positively impacted by a good attitude. I think that that's something that's pretty common to humans in general. People like, when people are happy. I have resting nice face, um, which was something I didn't really know that I had until uh, a couple people started taking pictures of me out in public, namely my husband, but we don't have to throw him under the bus. I was like, do you know you just smile just all the time, even at nothing? And I think it's because I'm thinking of nice things. <laughs> I really do. This is also the same reason why a lot of older ladies come up to me in uh, grocery stores and ask me to reach things for them. Or uh, one lady one time asked me to hold her child while she got the other one who was running away and just kind of handed it to me and was like, could you please hold my kid? And I think it's because I have resting nice face and it's just inherently trustworthy. So I held her little kid and then she came back and she was like, thank you so much. She was so frantic and flustered, it broke my heart. But yes, she was great and resting nice face is a really good thing to do. So th that's what I do to maintain, maintain? That's what I do to maintain. I said it again maintain positivity is I reroute all those negative thoughts. Typically it's when I want to complain about something. I try to reroute that. Instead be grateful for something that I have. And then because I'm thinking of nice things most of the time, I have resting nice face, which I think is something, again, everybody appreciates that. Even if you're in like the grocery store and just walking around. Of course, now you wouldn't be able to see my resting nice face due to, you know, face coverings and all that. But still, I smile with my eyes. Lock picking engineer asks, what keeps you motivated? You come across as you have the energy of a three-year-old. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a compliment or an insult, but I'm taking it as a compliment. Thank you very much. A lot of this, I feel like, is probably just my character or uh, my personality. Um, I'm typically very happy all the time, as we've already talked about. It's rare that I'm moody at this point. I also have found that the more that I do, the more energized that I am, which seems counterintuitive, but it is pretty scientific that people who sleep a lot end up being more lethargic, and people that don't move as much much, don't have as much energy. So for me, which I haven't always been as active and mobile as I am now, but as I continue to add more things and do more things outside and go more places and get more exercise, I found that I had more energy to do those things. And it was really, really hard at first. I'm specifically thinking of a time in my life when I was a slightly more slovenly, especially when I was first married. There just wasn't as much to do. And so I was a little more sedentary. But as things started to come in, I started getting more and more energy and I just started getting more, I don't know, I guess you would say enthusiastic. Moving more, being active, gives you energy and I think improves mood a lot. So if you're struggling with mood swings or um, perhaps some depression or anxiety, I would definitely recommend doing the hard thing because it's always so much harder whenever you're in that mood to get up and actually do something. Like that's the whole reason, like you're sad, you don't want to do anything, you want to lay in your bed. Do the really hard thing. Try to be as mentally strong as you can. Get up, take the shower, go on the walk, smell the flowers, um, talk to a friend, and as you continue to do those things and you start getting into more and more of a habit, it will come easier and you'll get more energetic. KT Tamura says, what is your dream hairstyle? Like any length or texture? <gasps> I'm so glad you asked. There is this beautiful, beautiful creator on TikTok who just has the most luscious locks I've ever seen in my life. She has like waist length, 
red curly hair. And if I could have that, I would probably die of happiness, which is probably why I'm not allowed to have it. I have very thin, very oily, um, and slightly brittle on the ends hair, and it's always been that way, and it doesn't matter what I do to it. That's just the way that it is. And since having children, it has gotten even thinner. Um, so yes, I don't do a lot with my hair. It has a, a perm, like a body wavy permy thing in it right now, but I don't typically dye it or anything. That's just not something I put a lot of value in at this time in my life, but my ultimate dream hair would be waist length red curly hair. Aw, Bethany Ann asks, how did you choose your baby's names? I am extremely, extremely thoughtful about children's names. I was like this whenever I used to write short stories and stuff and I just wouldn't name characters until the short story was over because I hadn't found the right one yet. So Lillian is my great grandmother's name. I really like to include family names as a way to kind of show honor to their memory and their legacy. So that was my great grandmother's name on my mother's side. And then Marie, oddly enough, was just something that I really loved. I, I kind of like French names um, and I've always liked that name. I've used it in multiple things that I've done. I've even tried to like find a way to sneakily make a soap called that because I just like the name Marie. So there isn't a family history to that name. It's just been something I loved a really long time. So Lillian Marie is our daughter and then William Andrew is our son and he was just like a huge conglomeration of a ton of very strong, very courageous, and very kind gentlemen in my family. So my father's middle name is William, uh, and then my father's grandfather's name was William, so it's another great grandparent, and that man was especially amazing. I'll have to tell you guys about him in a soap video sometime, because he and my great-grandmother on that side, William and Corja, her name was Corja Mabel, and I think that's the most adorable. William DeWitt and Corja Mabel were just absolutely amazing people. Um, so there's that. There's my dad. Also my brother Kenny. His middle name is William. So we can't like my three favorite dudes over there. And then Caleb's middle name is Andrew. So a lot of history, a lot of legacy with Will's name. I also really like old fashioned names. So Lillian and William were a little bit older. I also really like floral names for girls. I love the name Rosemary. Um, and I also really love a lot of the names that kind of go down that path. I have a whole list that I keep of baby names on my phone because I just love them. Sarah Elizabeth 07 asks, how did you figure out how to decorate your home so well? Well, I struggle with that. So first of all, let me just say I'm extremely flattered that you think that because interior decorating is something I feel I really struggle with. Uh, I'm not naturally good at it. Uh, I've Anything that I know is basically stuff that I've learned from Skillshare or that I have picked up looking at a lot of Pinterest people or watching um, Lone Fox, Alexandra Gator, or Mandy Googler, who's from Vintage Revivals on Instagram. I have a couple of other Instagrams that I follow and I just watch what they do. So a lot of the stuff that you're seeing is by me kind of mimicking other people. I'm not gonna take a lot of credit for uh, innovation. Uh, I, I just can't because it's not, it's not something I'm naturally very good at being creative with, but another thing that I find really, really helpful is to take a picture of the space with your phone, whatever you have, and then drawing or drag and dropping pictures of the items you think you might want in that space and then like sizing it. So it's kind of a lot of work, but for me, I've bought so many things I thought would look good in a space and then it gets here and I'm like, ooh, if only I had not done that. <laughs> So that's what I like to do is if they say like, oh, I don't know, you see this lamp back here? I wanna replace that lamp. So what I will probably do is take a picture of that area and then I will get on Urban Outfitters or whoever and I will like superimpose the picture of the lamps they have into that space to see what would look good. Um, I also typically measure to see how big the thing would be. If it's a picture, I would take a full measurement already and cut it out of like a big piece of paper and put it on the wall. That's how I decide and how big those needed to be. So pre-measuring, it's a lot more work, but I buy a ton of stuff online. Man, it saves me a lot of time. So that's my tip. 
I'm not super great at it, but that's what how I'm learning. And I guess this is one of those things that I just, I have to learn by doing. A bored Goodwin asks, how many tries does it take to get the color you had in your head? Now, let me just say, this is something that I have gotten way better at over the years. And you have to remember that I've been making soap for almost 11 years. So I know my colors really, really well. Most of the time I can nail it on the first try. Sometimes it takes two. If I don't nail it the first time, I will the second time because I know what it takes to get things to the proper shades, the proper hues. I'm not really even that good at knowing the color wheel. I try to use it as much as possible and I've tried to learn it, but there is just something in my brain that equates that to math. <laughs> I don't know why and I just it just doesn't it hasn't computed I also haven't like dedicated a ton of time to it maybe if I did uh, I would actually understand color theory a lot more but I've tried and it really does it's like algebra to me so most of the time on the first try but definitely on the second try and some of that is due in part to the fantabulous colors that are on the market and how accurate and precise they are cj create 8005 asks how are you what is your favorite day of the week and why i know this is random i do have a favorite day of the week and you guys will probably be surprised at what it is i like thursdays <laughs> And I think it's because a Friday is always like, yay, it's the weekend. And then a Saturday you kind of enjoy, but then, you know, Sunday is coming. So I feel like Sunday ends up being the end and you're just sad the weekend's over. And then, I mean, I know a lot of people like Monday and I think Monday was my favorite day of the week for a really long time, but now I'm really enjoying Thursdays just because I feel like it's a it's not the middle, but it's not the end either. Does that matter? I don't know. Do I have to really give an explanation for this? Am I overthinking it? Probably. I really like Thursdays right now. That's the short answer. <laughs> oh boy. Lost Soap Co. says, tell us yours and Caleb's love story. I'm pretty sure that I did this in the other video that I answered questions in, but I'm going to do it again because I love that man so much and I love our story. So, I went to a homeschool dance. Yes, that is correct. Not all homeschoolers are locked away in their room for their whole entire life and don't get any socialization. That is definitely, definitely a myth. Um, so I was going to a homeschool dance and, that my friend had invited me to, and I was not originally going to go, um, but my mom, surprisingly, was like, no, Katie, you should really go. You really should go. So I was like, okay. So Caroline and I went with our friend to this dance, and I saw Caleb across the room, and I just told Caroline, I was like, I want to dance with him. I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance with him. And she was like, okay. <laughs> He was 6'4", and very, very tall, and very, very slim, which is definitely not her type. So she was like, okay, go, go dance with the tall, skinny one. So I waited, and I kept getting asked to dance by other people I didn't want to dance with. I didn't know anybody, so I sat down again, and Caleb walks up to me, does not ask me to dance, just comes up and holds out his hand and waits. And you would think, by the way I'm saying this, that that's awkward, but it didn't feel awkward. It felt very like, I know you'll say yes. I've seen you looking at me. <laughs> And I liked it. So I took his hand and we started talking and I was absolutely head over heels in love when I when I left. Like, I, I know when I say that you're not going to believe me because it sounds like a movie, but I mean it. I went home and cried on Caroline's floor because I thought I wasn't going to ever get to see him again. He doesn't really do like the whole Facebook, Instagram thing. I don't know why we didn't exchange numbers. It was just one of those things that I was like, I'm never going to see him again. That was the love of my life and I've blown it. I'll never forget her looking at me being like, Oh my gosh, I think you actually love him after one night dancing with him three times. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened. And gosh darn it, if I didn't have to wait for like seven or eight months and I finally saw him again, I went to every dance, I was trying to find him. We were able to exchange things. It was never a friendship, that was never an option because I'm not gonna lie, he thought I was kind of annoying. I'm sure I was coming off really strong. And then he just couldn't stop thinking about me when we left. And so when we got together, there was no friendship. It was like, nope, we're interested in each other romantically. Um, we dated for three years and then now we have been married for almost five. So we've been eight years together. 
I'm still head over heels in love. It would never be anybody else. It's fantastic and that's our story. Okay, so I can hear Baby Will stirring above me. So I'll answer this last question really quick. This is from Elise Lambrick. And I'm sorry if I didn't say your name right. She asks, are you never afraid to be not original enough? Which I think is always something that scares a lot of people, especially people who create a lot. There's just a lot of pressure to be really, really unique and to be the only one. I can't help but remember the saying, there's nothing new under the sun. I don't try to be like the most original person on the planet. That's not really something that bothers me. I don't really think about that that much. I really, more I'm trying to think about what's the best that I personally can do, because I'll tell you this right now, I am not the best soap maker on, on the planet. I'm not, like there, there I mean, there is <laughs> substantial evidence but there are many people better than me, probably more original and or more creative as well. And that's great because they're also creating super cool art. But what I'm focusing on is doing the best that I can do and creating art that I enjoy and creating art for other people that you guys enjoy. So I would shift my focus if you feel that way, being like, oh, it's never, it's never original. I'm never coming up with anything new. I would shift that focus instead to be more about what do I enjoy making? Whether or not it's the most extreme, the most elaborate, the best in the world. That's not the part that matters. What matters is, are you enjoying it while you're making it? Are you creating the best that you personally can create? And are you being as original and true to yourself that you can be? And if the answer is yes, then you've hit all the right check boxes and you should take some of that unnecessary pressure off of yourself because there's always gonna be times where we think that we have made something brand new only to find out that somebody else has maybe done something super, super similar two or three years ago. But that doesn't, see, that doesn't void what you did. That doesn't void what you did. You still created something original and masterful to you. And that's what matters. So that's what I would say for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this q and I actually really enjoyed it. Maybe I should do this once or twice, you know, every quarter. I don't know. We'll see. If you enjoyed it, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm really happy that I got to answer some of your questions. Thanks for bearing with us after we are uh, dealing with the extra things from Snowmageddon. <laughs> and I will see you guys next week for another video. So until then, have an absolutely royal day. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today. And I mean it. There's so many fun things we can do. And let me tell you something that we can look forward to as well. Number one, it's starting to get warmer outside for most people. I know I already said that in a lot of the homestead videos, but I don't know, maybe it's because I see so much glorious sunshine that I'm really thinking about it. Number two, <gasps> Easter and St. Patrick's Day are coming. Wouldn't it be fun if you made like some themed cookies or something for yourself? I know that's what I'm gonna do. For Will and Lily, I'm gonna make them some Easter cookies, like little peeps, uh, a little egg basket, maybe some little, I don't know, I don't know. I bought some cute uh, like little cookie cutters from Etsy. That's something to look forward to. Make up something. <laughs> there were a couple of days where I celebrated my cat's birthday and it was something I really looked forward to for like a month because I knew what its birthday was. There's always something to celebrate. There's always something to be happy about. Um, so those are some things off the top of my head that we can all collectively look forward to. The first day of spring, we have Easter and we also have St. Patrick's Day coming up. We've just finished Valentine's Day and uh, I got to be snowed in on Valentine's Day, which was very unusual and very fun. All right, uh, now I really hear Will talking up there, so I'm gonna leave you guys. Um, thanks for sitting with me today and having this chat, and I hope you'll have a lovely day, and until next time, bye for now. Meow.